Hi, I am Ahmed Alduri, and I'm a concept artist, YouTuber, teacher. I work in the concept art field as well as in the teaching world. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to sketch and design a concept of a monkey character. Let's go. In this process, I'll be starting with sketching a wireframe figure, designing costume and outfit stuff onto the figure itself, applying color, and then of course, painting the concept throughout as a design. All right, time for some monkey business. I'm gonna be designing a character based on monkey or maybe a mix of monkeys. We'll see how it goes. I'm thinking to mix it a bit of humanoid and uh, you know, standing upright, wielding some kind of weapon and a kind of dark fantasy kind of vibe. Here are the faces that I'll be looking at. And I'll probably just dive in and start with a skeleton. So usually I like to start with some kind of, uh, well, wireframe and uh, you could really do that pretty easily by doing a quick collarbone and then you have like the sternum here and just like laying a rib cage right so by that we can sort of build the rest of the body i am keeping in mind that this is just a quick concept to figure figure out some shapes and design elements not really too concerned uh regarding making a finished render uh, one thing i am keeping in mind here is that maybe the forearms really long kind of like a chimpanzee I'm going to make him a little bit taller and elongated. All right, cool. I'm going to lower the opacity on this layer and make a new layer above that and kind of go around and sketch different faces and look for kind of a face that we like. It's really important to have reference because I don't have too much practice in drawing monkeys. So I'm looking at reference photographs kind of inform the design decisions rather than trying to invent everything with the pressure of needing to be accurate um, without reference. It's kind of unnecessary. Might as well have a bunch of different images in front of you and just see what happens. All right, so I think I came up with a couple that I, I like. Any one of these could be a valid uh, design. It's just up to you as a designer if you're in this position where you have different things to choose from. Go with whatever feels right for you uh, and see what happens. And you can always go back and use your previous sketches for things so you don't have to feel like you have to commit and never go back. So I'm going to go with this one. Uh, yeah, so I sketched in a little bit of the uh, clothes here and I'm making sure to kind of have these big shapes here uh, for the silhouette to contrast against the small shape of the head. Uh, this will kind of help make the character really noticeable uh, from a distance if you're playing this in a game or seeing the character in a movie. So we're gonna have a uh, concept of big shapes like these against smaller shapes like the head and then even smaller shapes to kind of have that big, medium, small relationship where we're kind of leading the eye to different focal points by using shape contrast and using sizes. One quick trick I can share with you for drawing hands. If you have the upper arm, or I'm sorry, the uh, the forearm here, and you kind of have like a area where the wrist is, you'll know that the, the knuckles are gonna end up being here. And because of that, well, the knuckles are either, if they're relaxed, they're kind of gonna have a, a bit of a curl to them, sort of like this. But what I like to do is knowing where the wrist is, is I'll do this kind of four point wave. What I mean by that is, you know, if you have like, a wave doing that, having four points uh, next to each other. So what I'll do is kind of draw that along a ar an arc. So if we have an arc shape like this, we'll just do, right? And just by doing that, it already implies the knuckles. And it doesn't make sense yet, but once you add the fingers like this, suddenly it'll start to take shape. And from here, you'll, there'll be another arc with the other knuckles which also have um, that rhythm. I'm gonna pull them down because we want that kind of elongated monkey kind of hand. Maybe a little smaller. So I'm gonna design some props here on the side and kind of just arrange them onto the character. For example, some kind of potion flask coming off of his belt. I wanna have some kind of 
tattered cloth uh, coming off of his back, maybe as some some sort of cape. Um, but I want to imply wear and tear as though this character has kind of gone through battle or traveled a long ways. So I'm just going to have some cloth bunched up with some frayed ends here and there. Right now, I don't have any specific reference for this hand pose. So what I'm going to do is just draw my own hand in the pose that I want. I'm going to be holding it just a little... Uh, box cutter just to can kind of get the feel of where the fingers would be placed. I just took a picture of it so that should be on the screen now but I'll be looking at it in real life as I draw it because using a reference that's in front of you I think is better than a photo if you can because you're looking at the object or subject with two eyes and that gives you stereo vision meaning you're seeing depth and and all that stuff that's very useful information. All right, so that would be a concept sketch for the character. And I'm going to just lay in some local colors uh, without too much concern about rendering, but just to explore different possibilities for what the color palette might be. I'm sort of looking at the reference, kind of getting a gauge for the temperature range. There's a lot of warms and cools, uh, specifically around the fur area for the reference that we used for this drawing. So I might be just taking a little bit of that copper kind of feel and using that as a base to build up from for this character. So I made a new layer underneath that sketch. I'm just going to fill it in, treating it kind of like a traditional painting with some burnt sienna uh, underpainting on a canvas. I also figured instead of him being some kind of warrior, he could just be a traveler. So I changed that stick, which originally was going to be a sword, but now it's just kind of like a traveler's bag situation. All right, from here, what I'm going to be concerned with is value groups. So right now, the orange is kind of acting as a mid value. So if I make things darker, it'll push the values down. If I make them brighter, obviously makes the values higher. Um, what I want to do is group them so that they alternate almost like a checkerboard pattern, where it's alternating between dark and light, dark and light, and with a bit of midtones here and there. And there's different combinations for those kinds of lightings uh, scenarios, and uh, not lighting, uh, value grouping. All right, pretty happy with that. Gonna go ahead and lower the opacity on this, the line work here and start painting some more details over the line work on a new layer. All right, so this part of the video is going to be time-lapsed. I'm not actually painting that fast, I wish I could. And here I'm going to be tightening things up. For the most part, I'm going to be working on only a few layers and flattening things down. I usually don't like to do uh, too many layers, but uh, really getting in there with a kind of oil painting kind of brush and implying different forms based on the reference. And here's where I'd like to stress again the importance of having reference. And I'm not copying the exact image there, but it's sort of informing the, uh, the geometry and polygons of the, I guess, the sculpting quality or the sculpture quality of the design. Here's where I'm also concepting different ideas, like the strip of gray in the hair. And you'll see here adding little indications of maybe age with like a beard or something. And of course, this can be taken further with more iterations later on. And at a certain point, I won't be uh, using the references anymore, just kind of going with the flow and figuring things out. Uh, but here I'm sort of trying to refine the, the different types of rope patterns. And I kind of had a hard time at first, then I just settled for just a bunch of circles kind of lined up with each other so that they uh, catch light on the top and have shadow on the bottom side. And this will be a really quick way to indicate ropes or anything like that uh, in your design by just kind of blocking in the light side and the shadow side. And I really do enjoy simplifying things like that. Uh, that blue potion flask, I really wanted to use that as a focal point later on. So I will be making that really bright. So it acts as a sort of glowing thing that is, you know, brighter than everything else in here. Because it's really, there's not much other color. Everything feels a bit muted and gray. So here I want to imply a bit of a silk texture on the clothing there to imply a kind of a royal, perhaps, uh, coat or something and really making sure that specular highlight is is nice and bright. Here I'm doing the same thing and I'm going to use a mask here and paint out a bit of a pattern. Now sure this is just a concept and later on if I want to refine that I could do maybe more research on patterns and do a top-down drawing of a pattern almost like a tattoo and then transfer it into either another pass on this or maybe pass it off to a 3d modeler uh, but for the most part i'm just cleaning things up around here adding a bit of ambient occlusion here now what that is is a very soft shadow that really helps imply um, like a bit of depth and realism for the lighting and it's actually a pretty quick trick to make things look and feel realistic yeah again still just cleaning things up and you know 
you don't really have to clean things up like this. It really depends on what you want to do. But um, things like this where I'm just implying a reflective quality on the stick rather than it just being matte is important. But it, again, it doesn't have to be super rendered and, and, and photorealistic for it to feel like a concept because we can just zoom out and we can all agree like, okay, that does look like what it's supposed to, right? And here I'm just tightening things up with uh, some line work as if it was like a ZBrush file and I'm going in there with a small brush, kind of defining what things are a little bit, right? Anyway, so that's just about the end of this concept walkthrough. I actually had a really great time uh, working on this and I definitely wanted to just dive in and make more a bunch of these monkey characters and maybe do a world building exercise with it. Okay, we've reached the end. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you have not yet done so, definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel and stay tuned for new videos.